person. I, I am an Orthodox uh, Hasidic Jew from Israel. Uh, and I work as a historian or um, a kind of consultant to the court that, uh, in Jerusalem that Rabbi Hollander is talking about. Uh, most of the people here know me from my endless discussions about uh, the similarities between Islam and, and Jewish customs. I, I enjoy talking about the uh, Hadith uh, Tabari, uh, Ibn Hisham, Wakidi, uh, talking about the kings of Hamyar. As much as I enjoy talking about the, the Midrash Rabbah, the uh, Midrash Gula, Rambam, Tosfos, the Shulchan Aruch, uh, I, I, I like very much to talk about common prayer customs between Islam and, and Judaism, about the similarities in architecture between the Masjid and the uh, synagogue, between the similarities of the calendar, the, the Jewish uh, uh, holidays and, and customs. But it's clear to me that there's more than just similarities, that, uh, that they obviously go back to a common root and a, a common faith. MashaAllah. A common uh, heritage. Uh, in our Jewish literature, we are taught that there is such a thing as the common faith, a fundamental religion which all men are born into. And this is a basic faith which is obligated on all mankind. In the past, we've called it by different names, the uh, Yirei Shemaim, which means the fear of heaven, the people who have fear of heaven, Gertoshav, or Bnei Noach, the children of uh, Noah, or during Hellenist times, in Greek it was called Theosebea. Uh, and according to the school of thought of uh, Rabbi Ben Mosig, uh, this fundamental faith is also called by the name Islam. In the Torah, uh, everywhere that the word Kenite, Keni, uh, which means the children of Jethro uh, is, is translated to, to uh, in the Aramaic translation in Targumokos uh, the word is used is the word that is used is Salamai or Muslimai some have suggested that this refers to the great number of non-Jewish believers who came to sacrifice the Kurban Shlamim in Jerusalem together with the Jews Salamai Muslimai, Muslimi. This could be a clear indication in, in our literature that Islam is an ancient religion dating back to the time of the Second Temple or, uh, or even earlier. And if Islam's roots, if the roots of Islam are the same as what we call B'nai Noah, then for us it is much older. This is the religion of Noah, this is the religion of Adam himself. The, the closeness of, of Islam and Judaism has always been understood by biblical scholars un until recent years. The close relationship with the Jews, the, the ten lost tribes, uh, the, the Arabs, the Rechabites, all this was assumed to be true. It was only with the advent of German revisionists like Wellhausen and Buchler and others who, but this began to change. They introduced ideas that Islam had something to do with worshipping the moon, rocks, or some asteroid that fell. Mm. But devout, jo devout Jews know that this is not true. It's a fact of Jewish law that we believe that m Muslims and Muslims are perfect monotheists. Mm. They worship the same God that we do. MashaAllah community. There was a Jewish community, quite a large Jewish community, that lived in Arabia. And some of those people had specifically emigrated because they were expecting in Arabia the coming of the last prophet. In fact, out of the rabbis of Medina, half of them actually became Muslim. And one of the very famous and most learned of the rabbis of Medina was Abdullah ibn Salam. In fact, he said concerning the Prophet Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, we knew your name and we knew the time and the place of your coming. And he accepted Islam. In fact, when he accepted Islam, he said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, O Messenger of Allah, the Jews are a very tricky people. So let us test them before we announce my embracing Islam. So what he did is he gathered all the Jews and he got the Prophet Muhammad to talk to them. And the Prophet Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, asked the Jews, he said to them, what would you say if Abdullah ibn Salam became Muslim? They said, may Allah protect us from that, he will never become Muslim. 
So well, what do you think of him? He said he's the best of us and the most knowledgeable person amongst us and he is the wisest amongst us. He would never become Muslim. And again the Prophet said, what would you say if he became Muslim? They said, no, he will never become Muslim. May Allah protect us from that. And when they said that the third time, then Abdullah ibn Salam stepped out from where he was hiding, he said, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasulu. And when he said that, then the Jews started saying, He is the most ignorant amongst us, and he is the worst amongst us, and he is the least one to uh, know anything amongst us. So they completely changed their tune once he had become Muslim. But Abdullah ibn Salam was one of the very famous Jews and the Jewish rabbis who converted to Islam in the time of the Prophet. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because he recognized that Muhammad was the person that had been foretold in his scriptures and experience years ago I used to spend every Sunday afternoon in a place called Speaker's Corner Speaker's Corner is on the corner of Hyde Park in London and there is a place there where you can stand up and you can speak about anything you like well I for 10 years used to go down there and speak about the religion of Islam and in my years down there, I got to know a Jewish rabbi. He was a very nice man. He used to listen to me and he was always very polite and talked about Islam in a very nice way. And one day during one of our conversations after some years, I thought that it was about time I should invite him to Islam. So I said to him, you know my friend, we have been talking now for many years and even you have admitted to me that Muhammad is a prophet so why then do you not embrace Islam he said to me we Jews we never change our religion I said but half of the rabbis of Medina became Muslim he said that is true but still we Jews never change our religion he looked at me and said listen to me my friend God sent to us a prophet Moses and we didn't even listen to him do you think we're going to listen to another prophet after him from another tribe from another people when he said that I have nothing left to say he knew that Muhammad was a prophet in fact another rabbi also came up to me and he said to me we know Muhammad is a prophet and he quoted to me a passage from the Bible in reading the English translation of Song of Songs 516 it finishes the description by saying, He is altogether lovely, but what most people don't know is that the name of that man was given in the original Mejilat. Here is verse 16, and how it is written in ancient Hebrew, before introducing the vowels, in the 8th century. From the Hebrew Bible, on scripturetext.com. Here is the word in question. This word is made of four letters. Mem. Het. Mem. Dalit. Now when reading the word as it is written in its original form, with no vowels, it can be read as Muhammad, which is the name of the Muslim prophet, or as Mamad with no A after the H. According to Ben Yehuda's Hebrew English Dictionary, it is correctly pronounced as Muhammad, not Mamad. So how we're going to know for sure if it's pronounced as Muhammad, the Muslim prophet, or as Mamad, a random Hebrew word, the only way is to give the verse to a rabbi and say to him, please read. Here is the Song of Songs 516, and how it is read by a rabbi from a Hebrew Jewish site. Please notice, the im in Hebrew, is a plural of respect. Here is the famous SDL translation tool which includes a professional human translation as well as an online translation. We 
we going to copy our Hebrew word of the Song of Songs directly from the Jewish site? It's the same site where you can hear the rabbi reading the verse in Hebrew. All links are in the description. So, we're going to copy the word and paste it and ask, please translate. Are they going to translate the meaning of the name of that person? As the Bible translators did. Which is the praised and the lovely one or are they going to keep the name as it is? Well, see it yourself. Here is the world lingo translator. The result is the same. It's Muhammad.